Hello kindergarten friends, happy Monday. We're in a brand new week of language arts and we're gonna be learning about the past. We talked about last week how we're gonna be learning about new and old things, things that have happened in the past and things that are happening in the future and how different things change. We talked about how cars are always changing and we looked at some of those old cars that we used to have to crank to get started or the old cars that didn't have a windshield or it wasn't enclosed so that way when you are driving down the street you would get really cold in the winter or really hot in the summer and all those things have changed. This week we're going to talk about how we will how we learn about the past. So what are different ways we can learn about the past? So you can learn about the past by books just like we're going to be reading. You can learn about the past by watching movies or documentaries. You can talk to family members and ask them what it was like in the past. And then this week Miss Beer will also share some of the things she had as I as I was growing up. So we're going to look at the first page 52 and 53 together and on the left side it says learning about the past. We can learn about the past in different ways. We can read about the past. So you can see this little boy and then this man reading a book together. So they're learning about the past. Over here on the right we can hear about what the past was like. So it looks like maybe these children are listening to their dad telling them about the past. And we can study objects from the past. So we see an archaeologist here who is digging in the dirt to find maybe bones like dinosaur bones or different potteries from people from the past. So those are all different ways that we can learn about the past. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to read the story Uncovering the Past and then we do doing pages 54 and 55 in our workbooks. Okay boys and girls, I'm on page 68 and 69 and on the left side we see previewing the vocabulary. We have past and in the picture you can see people in the past, shovel so that way they can dig up different things um, and look for different artifacts. We have brushes because those artifacts are so old like the pottery maybe some dinosaur bones you need to take a brush and be very careful as you dig them up. Because they're so old they can break and they're very fragile so when they're digging things up they're very careful brushing away the dirt so that way the objects don't break. And scientists. Read the text and look at the pictures to find how we can learn about the past. And our author is Jennifer Torres. Um, and Jennifer Torres works as a newspaper reporter. She writes stories that tell about our world and about ourselves. Also, she writes books for children. So she works on a newspaper, or she's a newspaper reporter, and she writes children books, which is pretty neat. Over here on the right is a cover of our story. It says, Uncovering the Past, written by Jennifer Torres, and then illustrated by Lisa Fields. So remember, Jennifer Torres is a person who wrote the story. She did all the words. And and the illustrator is the person who does all the pictures in the story. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to open up the story and see what Uncovering the Past is all about. In seventy-one, in my packet, remember we go from left to right, start at the top and go down. So down here in the bottom, our first sentence says, One day in Mexico, workers were digging. They were near a hill. So we know that the setting or the place that the story takes place is Mexico. We have the big excavator. We have the construction workers working with their shovels, they have their hats on, they have that orange reflective so that way everybody can see them, and we have the wheelbarrow where they're taking all the dirt away. Let's look on the right side. Oh no, they hit stone that did not move. They stepped, stopped digging. Oh no, they hit a stone that did not move. They stopped digging. So when they are using the excavators, those are really big machines, and normally in the ground there's lots of little rocks that will move pretty easily but this one didn't move. So they need to stop the machine so that way they can see what is down there. And this is close read. How did workers feel when they hit a stone? Highlight the words that help you answer the question. So they said, oh no, they were surprised, right? They weren't expecting to find anything in the ground. They weren't expecting to hit a stone. So let's go ahead and turn the page and see what they found. Okay, Ms. Theory is now on page 72 and 73. We're gonna look at the left side first. The stone was pink, it looked very old. Scientists came to see it. So here's a construction worker, and he knew he found something that he had to tell the scientists about. A lot of times when there are people building the construction crews, if they find something that is different or maybe something from the past, then they have to call the scientists in so that way they can report it and see what's there. On the right side it says, they had little shovels and brushes. They examined the stone and they read books. Okay, so here they are, you can see, you can see the pink bricks in the background and they have little trawls and little shovels and brushes and they're brushing away the stones, they're looking at the books, 
thinking, hmm, I wonder what this could be. And here's our close read question. Why do you think the scientists read books? Highlight the words that help you answer the questions. So they needed to look and see what kind of stone this is, right? So they had to look in the past and look through books to see if maybe that would help them answer those questions. Okay, let's turn to the next page and see if we find out what they found. Okay, boys and girls, left side first. Scientists figured out that the stone was part of an old wall. The wall was part of the sports arena. Okay, so if you look at this picture, both of these pages kind of connect, and you can see that these are the old walls, and we kind of have this, like, um, starry background, and it's kind of a little fuzzy, kind of like a cloud. And so it's letting you know this isn't something that's happening now. It's not a real picture of a photograph, but this is them putting together what it used to look like in the past. Long ago, people played games in the arena. They used a black rubber ball. So it kind of looks like they were maybe playing some kind of like soccer game with a rubber ball. And it looks like all the people up here would be in the audience watching the people down here play the game. So the big wall would be part of the arena. So that way, that's where they played in the middle. Kind of like a football field. You have the football field. And then you have all the bleachers around. So that way you can see the game. Okay, let's see what happens next. Okay, boys and girls, let's read on. The scientists were excited. They uncovered more of the arena. So now you can see here's the big wall, and it looks like up here is the grass and trees, and then they can see here's the wall. So maybe they'll need to dig deeper, or maybe even go further out this way where the grass and trees are to see if they can find more. Studying old things can teach us about the past. So nobody knew that this arena was here, right? They had to dig up to be able to find something about the past. And so the more we find out about the past, the more it can help us in the future. It can teach us how people used to live so that way we can make improvements to make sure that we do things better in the future. Okay, boys and girls, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on pages 54 and 55 in our workbook. Okay, boys and girls, this week we're gonna be working on the short U, the uh sound, and the long U with the magic E that makes the oo sound. So a lot of times, instead of hearing the U, it's more like a oo sound. Over here, we are going to match the sounds that sound the same. We have drum. Is that a short sound or a long sound? Dr uh, mm. It's a short sound, and then it has a line drawn here to the sun. S uh, mm. Do they both have short U sounds? They do. So I'd like you to draw a line from drum to sun. Next, we have cube, cube, and we have mule. Do those both have long U sounds? Give me thumbs up for yes. Give me thumbs down for no. Thumbs up for yes. So we need to connect these two. Over here we have flute, duck, bus, and tube. Flute. Flute. Is that a long U or a short U? That's a long U. So does that match with duck? Duck. Is duck a short U or a long U? It's a short U. Let's go down the next one. Bus. B uh, s is bus a short u or a long u? It's a short u, so it doesn't work. How about tube? T oob. Tube and flute both have long u, so we're going to connect these two. Flute and tube. Next, let's see. Find the short u. So duck. That's a short u, right? Give me thumbs up. Okay, duck and bus. B uh, s. Very good. So we're going to connect these two. They both have the short u sound. Over here on the right side, we are going to tap out these words and match them more with either short sounds or long sounds. So the first one is C-U-B. Let's tap that out. Cub. 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 And we have sun, bike, flute, jug, mule. So let's see. Cub. Go ahead and trace it. C-U-B. We're looking for another word that has a short U. Cub. Sun, does sun have a short U? Give me thumbs up or thumbs down. Thumbs up, go ahead and draw a line. Next we have C-U-B and that magic E. So go ahead and get a highlighter if you like or a special crayon and we're gonna highlight that E. Okay, let's go ahead and tap it out, ready? Ka-oob, ka-oob, cube. So we're gonna go ahead and trace it, cube. And that does have the U in it, cube. And let's see, do we have bike? Does bike have a long U sound? No. How about flute, flute? 
Does that have the long U sound? It does. So go ahead and draw a line from cube to flute. Okay, next we have T-U-B. Let's sound it out. T-U-B. T-U-B. Tub. Go ahead and trace it. T-U-B. Okay, we have hat, mule, and jug. Which one has a short U sound? How about hat? Does that have a short U sound? No. How about mule? Does that have a short U sound? No. How about jug? Jug. Does that have a short U sound? It does. Go ahead and draw a line. The last one is T-U-B-E. So I see a magic E. I'm going to go ahead and trace it. Now let's sound it out. T-U-B. T-U-B. Tube. So let's go ahead and trace it. And we're going to see which one also has a long U. Does hat have a long U? No. Nope. How about mule? Very good. So we're going to draw a line from mule to tube. Okay, great job, everybody. I will see you tomorrow for a little more language arts. Bye, friends.